What is up guys, this is Max Square back with another video. In this tutorial, I want to talk about workspaces. Now, if you're working in certain apps, a lot of your time, maybe you're working in Photoshop, and whenever you open up a project, you have to open up Photoshop, you open up a website, maybe YouTube to go over tutorials, and even opening up notes. Those kind of things can take a lot of time when you have to go find those apps, find certain files, and go to certain websites. So I found an app on the App Store that I think can fix this problem, and it's called Very Creative Workspace is. It's called, it's called Workspace, let me check, it's called, it's called Workspaces, and this is only about six bucks, and full disclosure, they did not give me a copy of this app to review, I just found it, bought it, thought I'd give it a test, and I think it's working pretty well. Now, if you're working in certain workspaces, like if you uh, do a lot of design, you have your certain apps for design, if you are an animator, you have After Effects, you have all these certain apps that you use, um, and even if you're doing all of that at once, it can be very helpful just to switch between those different environments quickly. So when you buy that app, it just sits in your menu bar, it's this little plier icon at the top. When you click on it, it just shows you a list of all of your workspaces. So you can see that I have one called Screen Record, and when I hit that, it just launches ScreenFlow, um, it launches a monitor for my mic input levels, and it also just opens up the YouTube Creator Studio, so I can have that all open up at once and not have to individually go and do that. Now because I'm already running ScreenFlow, I won't show you what that looks like, but I have made some others like Go Shopping. So when I click this, I just hit the Start button, and it'll launch Notes, and it'll also launch Amazon. Now this just launched to my other monitor, but these two apps did open up as soon as I click that start button. Now if you click the edit button at the bottom left, you can actually edit your workspaces and add new ones. So if you just click that plus icon at the bottom left, you can give your workspace a name. I'll just call this, uh, you know, design or something like that. And then you can open up certain apps from here. So if you go to this middle column, you can hit this plus icon and you can choose whether you want to open up a certain email, terminal, command, uh, folder, app, file, and a website address. Um, this is really cool because you can open specific websites and not just, you know, open up Chrome. So that can save you a ton of time in and of itself. So let's go ahead and add an application and I'll just start adding some of the apps that I use for my design workflow. And I'll go and find uh, Illustrator. I'll drag that on there. Let's go also go ahead and add a website address. I'll just type in YouTube for now. Um, but you can go to specific URLs if you want, and you can just click and drag a link right onto the icon there as well. And if you want to get really picky, you can click on the advanced icon and choose which browser you want that to open in. So if you wanted, you could even have some websites open in Chrome, some in Safari, and if you're just really desperate, you could have it open in Internet Explorer. All right, so once we've got that workspace ready to go, we can go back to the menu bar, come out of this workspace, and just click on Design. Then we can click on Start, and you'll see that all of those apps start to open. Now, of course, it's going to take some time for all these things to open. Um, I mean, that's not going to speed up that process, but you can still see that I saved some time of going into Finder or even just using Spotlight and typing in Photoshop, After Effects, Illustrator, uh, because sometimes even when you type in those things, um, there's certain apps that share the same first few letters, and so you can't just type in like PHO and hit Enter because that might open up photos, and you get the idea. Um, but you can see that these three apps have opened now, um, and also uh, YouTube opened here that just, again, opened up on my other monitor. So why does every person in the world not use this app? Well, that's a very good question. Um, first of all, it is a little pricey. It's six bucks. Um, you know, I think for what it does, it could be two or three bucks. I know that's kind of picky. That's just a personal preference. Another thing that I think would be cool is um, to be able to reverse certain workspaces. So if you do have a lot of them um, that you tend to switch between, it'd be nice to uh, kind of reverse a certain one to maybe close those apps. And I know this can get kind of technical if you're working um, in apps that don't save your progress automatically. Um, you know, it might have to ask you to save, you know, where you want to save it, and then it doesn't end up saving you any time. So I get that that does have to be kind of thought through. But um, it would be cool to kind of figure out how that could work and just switching between those automatically. 
And another thing I think would be cool to integrate is the size and placement of each window. Um, now I know you can do this with other apps, um, but I haven't really found an app that will save uh, sets of these windows. I, I found ones that will save just the default position for you, but you can't have certain, you know, environments like I want anytime I open up Photoshop in this workspace to save it to that size and so on. Um, so I think that would be a, a cool feature to integrate. But from what I've seen, this is a pretty new app and it looks like they're updating it pretty constantly. So there's no telling that that might not show up in the next couple of months or a year or two. Anyway guys, that's been it for this tutorial. I hope that helped you and I will see you in the next one.